Yep. Oh, he's got it. Whoa, whoa. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back. Today, we're getting out with Fisherman Dad Jimmy. It's going to be a good old time. It is just myself at the moment in the car, starting off another intro. Two videos back to back, the same style. And I really have no clue what I'm doing today. I just brought a bunch of gear, but we will put together a plan of action here in a moment and figure out what we're going to do. I really want to catch some fish today. We had good luck on the last video, but I didn't want to like just go out with one bait and try and make things happen. I'd rather bring the arsenal and see if I can catch something throwing the whole tackle box, right? There's some big fish at the spot we are at right now, as well as security that usually gets onto you if you park right next to the water. So we is across the street. Gonna make our way over there, probably film the whole thing on the GoPro because this mic I picked up after our road video micro mic, uh, broke it kind of sucks so like if I go out there and I get in any kind of wind it just peaks and cracks and it sounds terrible so a couple more days we'll have a new road mic I'm gonna get a couple rigs out grab the GoPro chest mount up and let me know if you guys want to see a video on how to start a fishing channel in 2021 because I'm probably gonna put it out whether you want it or not but if this video hits a thousand likes I will definitely put together a how to start a fishing channel in 2021 there's been a record number of fishing licenses sold this last year like 10x and I really think there's very strong potential for you guys to start a fishing channel whatever the reason might be for right just to express your creativity maybe to start getting some free baits rods and gear from companies reels things like that it happens man and more now than ever companies are willing to dish the stuff out so I just want to throw that out there real quick in this intro before we start fishing I'm gonna go ahead and grab the goods and see you out on the water setting up the GoPro what's going on Jimmy's in the house with the Crocs we in here, boy. <laughs> let's go and that power bank is slim I like that one? Yeah, that's what the heck? Line. I wonder if it's got like the same capacity as a lot of them bigger ones. That's off the chain. I gotta pick up one of those. 18.5 watt hours, and this said what? 37.2 watt. Okay, so this one's he's got another 10, what I mean, it's 10, 20 watt hours. Right, things are looking dirty, y'all, so I'm going with the spinner bait and the black and blue jig out here. If I see any spots that look good, I might toss the uh, jig in there a couple times. Otherwise, I'm just gonna prioritize covering some water with the spinner bait while it is. Uh, just a slight breeze down there, but definitely the stained water. I like all the flash on this. I'm going with Shad and Chartreuse, and I got a couple saucy swimmers in the bag, too, in case I decide to toss on a swim bait. But Jimmy is here. We are uh, gearing up, ready to catch some bigs today. Wish us luck. Mainly from getting kicked out by security, but also the Did fishing. Did you get kicked out for everyone? Oh, yeah, every time. For real? No, but like 50% of the time. You got your resident ID? No. Half ounce spinner bait, y'all, so I can get down there. Go to rod, gold series right here with the Metanium DC. And I'm betting this is 15 pound fluorocarbon. I believe that's what I got on the rig here today, making the first cast. I might tie on a saucy swimmer, but I'm really not tripping at the moment. I just wanna, I just wanna get to fishing. Dude, it's thick right here. What the heck? These fish are blinded. Who knows where they're at today and what they're up to after the thunderstorm we had last night. Power flickered on and off at our place. And I don't know how it's got the fish feeling today, but I would imagine they're chilling somewhere. We gonna have to play hardball to get that first bite. This one might have been affected more just because it's got that a lot of bank where it's just all grass and dirt and mud and stuff. And we may just want to hit a little bit of the bank line and then see if that one on the other side of the neighborhood is looking better. This is like what I had the confidence fishing when I first started though. I was always like hitting ponds that look just like this. Really? I don't know if it was just the time of year, but I was always fishing dirty stuff. And like, you know, you could throw a Texas rig like right here and you could get one because they can't see you as well as you can't see them, so. I mean, look at this, guys, look at that. There's like three inches of visibility. If a fish sees this and it's hungry, it's gonna, let me tell you what, it is gonna hit it out of reaction because, you know, normally these fish have got fantastic clarity here. Mm -hmm. So they can spot the bait fish from a mile away. Today, not the case. So if I run by one, I'm expecting a bite. All right, y'all, spot number two. Spot number one was kind of a bust. This one's not looking too much better, to be honest, but a smaller body of water, maybe we can locate them a bit easier. Should be easier to cover. Uh, I went ahead and brought along a wacky rig to tie in with the rest of the goods. Let's get to casting. I'm gonna try and get past all this gunk. Bass literally just jumped off the water. No way. Yeah. What? What? Did you film that? <laughs> oh my god! What? They're up shallow. Did you scare it? No, I don't, it just jumped off the water. There's no way. I swear. Dude, <laughs> these I fish are on something different after that thunderstorm. I don't even gotta catch them with a lure. They just come right at me. Dude, was he getting chased? Look at him. What? That thing might have been getting chased by Big Mama. There might be a five right here, bro. Literally just jumped out of here. I've never seen that happen. That's crazy. Jimmy, little, like you were just standing here. Yeah, I thought it was a frog. I was like, like I thought it was like a or something. <laughs> He did not catch that on his rod and reel. That fish just jumped out of the water. First one on the bank. <laughs> Definitely wouldn't argue if anyone told me there was a bobcat back here. Dude, yeah, after like, after seeing that one, especially just like in the city, I'm like, dude, they're probably hanging out in this stuff all the time. And they're like, watching me. literally, yeah. 
I wonder. I'm like, uh, it's something I don't really think about. And then I saw that one. I'm like, that's a big mofo. Like that thing. Crazy. Yeah, you never know when they're having a bad day. <laughs> if we decide to try that clear water spot next, we can like smaller finesse stuff like a drop shot or jerk bait. Uh, like a, yeah, jerk bait or, or like a fluke. I have those uh, darts if you want to try and throw those. I don't know if you've had some time with those or not, but. Oh, here's all the turtles, dude. I wonder if the water's warmer over here. Okay, so I'm venturing towards the back of this place and I'm seeing some turtles. That usually tells me that the water might be warmer on this side. And if that's the case, I imagine the fish would either be more active or uh, just decide they want to hang out in this area. So let me see if we're right. It was garbage at those first two spots, but this spot almost always stays clear. They kind of die at blue. So look at this. Yeah, this has got some visibility. Regardless, I'm breaking out the finesse stuff, trying to do our best to get a bite today. So if the fishing is ever slow, bust out a little jerk bait like that. Wacky rig, you know the deal. We should be able to get on them with these two setups. I'm gonna grab my drop shot stuff. I got confidence. Have to catch one on it. All right, y'all, they are definitely playing hardball today. I'm rigging up a drop shot. So what I like to do is tie my usual Palomar nut just with a little extra line. So kind of tie it with a bigger loop. And then I take my line and I go back through the eye of the hook because you wanna make sure that hook is in the upright position as you're fishing it. So I go back through the eye away from the hook point. So what happens is as the weight is down there setting on the bottom, this hook always stays in the upright position. If you don't do that step, the hook could just be kind of twirling around and you really want it to stay upright with your bait on there. So I'm gonna break out a drag and drop for the first time in a while. And let me get one of these Carl's weights here. The quarter ounce, it's fairly heavy, but everything's bigger in Texas. This is the smaller size drag and drop. This is a green pumpkin pearl color. So pretty much just a green pumpkin top here but it's got a nice little flash on the bottom. On those drop shot baits, you usually just barely skin hook the nose. So I'm just gonna go right on through there. And I'm telling you, this is a deadly bait when the fish aren't biting. I'm gonna see if I can prove it right. Although they are just asleep right now, it seems. I usually don't expect to bite after a thunderstorm like we had last night. It was pretty intense, but if something's gonna do it when the rest fails, it's gonna be this right here hands down a small wacky rig would really get the job done here too but the thing is i was noticing i'm going all the way to the bottom and i'm getting caught in that grass that's one of the main reasons why i decided to switch to a drop shot because your hook and your bait is elevated off the bottom even when that weight is on the bottom the the worm is sitting slightly higher right depending on how long you let that uh, tag end go and so regardless of whether my weight is in the grass or not that worm should still be hovering right above it in their face and you really don't even hardly have to work a drop shot sometimes what happens is it's just kind of hanging out on that hook and it's kind of wobbling down there whether you're really working it or not so you can really slow play it and allow those fish to come to you and you're usually throwing it on lighter tackle right so a drop shot you're oftentimes throwing it on 10 pound line or lighter okay so with that being said you don't want to hammer those hook sets because you might snap your knot you're using those lighter wire hooks, so you're using basically a smaller hook, right? So you don't need to pound the hook just to get it to penetrate the skin. So a lot of times if I feel a bite, I just kind of lean into it and start reeling. Some people even just, if they're using real light tackle, they'll just even kind of reel into it. They won't even really set the hook much. Yeah, there's rocks over there, so that's just something different on this side. Oh, there's one. There we go. Oh, he's a... Yeah, he's, he's not even a dink. He's a young buck, but yeah, he's got some... Oh, he, dude, he's stewed. Perfect. Oh my gosh, he's feisty. Yup, thank you. How are you doing? I gotta hand it to Jimmy. I've never actually caught a fish that has just plopped itself on the bank. Thank that you. honestly takes more skills. They just see me and they're like, oh, he's, <laughs> he's gonna catch me anyways. Let's just jump on the bank. <laughs> there you have it, man. Winter bass on the drop shot. Fat, yeah, that is true. Plump. Wow. He's been eating some dragon drops. Okay. Shoo. Oh, that's sick. Let's try that again. If someone says a bait is good or bad, it's like it doesn't really matter. It's just kind of people's own opinion. Yeah. Like, uh, like that, that, that live target one, it has kind of like a subtle kick. I was so happy when I saw it. Yep. Oh, he's got it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that a bass or do I have it side hooked? Dude, what is going on? I have it foul hooked. Oh, no. Don't drop your stuff. Dude, I must have it. It's a catfish. It's a catfish. I'm like, what is going on? This thing just freaking rocketed with that. Wow. Multi-species day, guys. And this is a decent little catfish. Okay. Dugan baits catch it all. <laughs> oh. No. That's fine. 
Okay, well that was funny. I, I assume he bit it. It's just they got those like soft. It's not quite the same as hooking into a bass. Yeah, like Usually it. the hooks actually don't come out on those catfish very easy. It takes a second to get it. Oh, he definitely had fun with this. Holy cow. Gotta love the drop shots when they get as tangled as, oh goodness, the worst bait caster bird's nest you've ever seen. Okay, intermission. And that wraps things up for the evening, y'all. Hope you enjoyed this one. And if you want to never get skunked again, I'm telling you, tie on a drop shot. If there is any sort of clear water, give that thing a half an hour. Walk your pond, walk your lake, have one with you on the kayak, keep it rigged on the boat, and watch the magic on. Fold. If you're interested in any of the stuff we were throwing, you can find it all at Carl's Bait and Tackle or GuggenSquad.com. Links down below if you want to save a little bit on your bait purchases. Until the next one, you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. <gasps>